Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 24 of my beta campaign. Uh, a little later in this episode, we will have the beginning of a base that we will be setting up on the moon. But right here, what we have is the Kayam 2, and the Kayam 2 is in the process of doing a crew rotation. We have uh, Jeb in uh, in the pilot seat, and he's just ferrying up. Uh, Manuki, Bob, and Ruben, who's going to be our next crew in the Hipparchus space station that is in low carbon orbit. And there is a mission that I have happening here um, as well. So we're also filling in a contract, though to be honest, I'm a little bit concerned with the contract. The contract is part of the Mission Controller 2 mod um, to visit what they call Skylab, though it's whatever you know you ended up putting up during the Skylab mission. But I can see so much of it is green that really shouldn't be. And one of the things it says, the first warning that there's something wrong here, is it's saying that the vessel I need to dock with is called KW2 Meter uh, Expanded Fairing Base. Um, yeah, that's not obviously what I called it, and in fact there is no fairing base on it anymore. Um, that fairing base was part of the transfer vehicle, I suspect. But uh, yeah, and I'm supposed to launch, dock with it, do repair with it, um, recover some science from orbit, then spend 28 days, uh, then land, which ironically seems to be complete already. And it's also saying that I must have at least three crew, uh, and that is not complete in green. I don't know why, because I have right now four crew on this particular vessel. So uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it, but if this, yeah, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Now you may recall uh, a number of episodes ago that the uh, Kayam 1, forgot the name of the vessel there for a second, the Kayam 1 came to a sticky end when uh, there was some sort of a glitch that occurred that had something to do with infernal robotics being connected to a docking port and uh, yeah that, that didn't go so well. So one of the things I do want to check out here is to do a, try and do a docking with this new New Kayam, and, and, and I have it. I have the docking port, although it looks the same, it is connected a little bit differently. I have an octagonal strut in between the uh, piston, the Infernal Robotics piston, and the docking port. So uh, I want to try this out and see if hopefully the same thing won't happen. The docking goes without incident, and that doesn't surprise me because it went. the docking went fine last time. It was with the decoupling that things went badly, but after the docking is completed, it's time to do our crew transfer. So uh, Jeb's going to stay right where he is, and Manuki and Bob and Ruben are going to transfer over to the Hipparchus station, and uh, Lunny and Rubble and Genimal are going to be coming back to Kerbin. I also ended up putting, uh, snuck a goo canister in there because part of this contract is to recover some science from low Kerbin orbit. So the goo canister, although it's not going to generate much science, it's at least some science, just to fulfill that part of the contract. And then it's time to get Ruben out there to see if we can do these repairs. And despite Ruben being our rookie and this being his first time in space, he expertly navigates the tight quarters in and around Hipparchus Station. Now, you can see there, just ahead of him, there is a canister there that contains spare parts. So what we got to do is get some spare parts out of here. So I hit the transfer out and I'm not really noticing what's going on. It says the part local. I don't know, local must be must be Ruben I suppose. And uh, part, maybe it's the part and I open this window and oh geez, I got there's too many things going on here. It's, so let's back off here a little bit and get rid of these windows and take a look here. We'll click on Ruben. So spare parts is just like any other resource. And you can see spare parts, it still says zero out of one. So I didn't, so maybe it's, maybe it's transfer in. Open the GUI, say in. Oh, yep, that works. Local, Ruben, yep, one. So we're putting the parts into Ruben, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it seems to me I should be taking them out, but that's okay. I got them here. So we got our spare part. And now what we got to do is head on over to the repair panel, which I attached on here. This is the section that was attached on that was that the as part of the Skylab mission, and it had me put this repair panel. So here's our repair panel, and we open the door. I've never done this before, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. Let's see here. I got to start repair. You must first check the system. Okay, check systems. You need to transfer some spare parts. Okay, start repairs. Now I need to... 
Oh, open glue. I got tra okay. Transfer out the parts. Okay, so now the parts are in there. Now I do repairs. You must first check system. Oh, check the system. Open repair. Conduct repairs. Repairs. Repairs started and finished. Okay, so finished using spare parts. Good job. All right, so we're done. Uh, one thing to kind of notice here is that uh, although it says the repairs are done, that contract requirement did not go green. So yeah, something's not right. And I noticed our docking did not go green. Uh, it still says that I need to have, oh, at least that says I have the right number of Kerbals now. It says I have at least three Kerbals. In fact, I got seven Kerbals here right now. It's like 70% of my, my forces out here right now. And then comes the time for us to blow on out of here. So we got everybody into the Cayenne that we need to. So we're going to decouple and hopefully won't have anything go wrong. Here we go. Undock. Where's that undock? The other one. There it is. Undock. All right. And we're undocked. I don't see any docking ports floating away, which is what happened last time. We'll... We'll go away here. I have control. The other thing that happened before is I had no attitude control at all either. So everything seems to be going all right. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to retract the docking port. Retract the docking port. The docking port is not retracting. Okay. Okay, that's not good. Okay, the docking port doesn't want to go down. So yeah, this didn't go without incident. Uh, it's definitely still just as high as it was before. Well, this led to a fair amount of playing around with the tweakables with that uh, Infernal Robotics piston, trying to see if I can get that docking port to go down. But no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to go down. I, I have no idea what the problem is. So eventually I just gave up on it. Let's just close these docking bay doors anyway. And yeah, so it's sort of sticking out. Hopefully that won't affect the aerodynamics or anything when uh, we go to do our our descent but uh, well nothing we can do about that now and in fact the descent went perfectly fine uh, one thing I did a little bit differently than last time is I tried to use pack fuel balancer a little bit better to my advantage so one of the things is I have three places in which monopropellant is stored the cockpit the nose cone and the cargo bay so I started by just balancing the monopropellant between all three of those and that seemed to make it quite a bit more balanced and in fact later on I even pumped a little bit more of the monopropellant back into the cargo bay. The cargo bay is the thing that's the furthest back. I also, because I was just finding that it was starting to get a little bit nose heavy, uh, I also didn't dump as much of my liquid fuel as I did last time uh, and that was a good thing because the only thing I probably did do a little bit wrong is I found I slowed myself down too much and had to use the rockets to pick up a little bit of speed but uh, yeah touchdown went without any issue whatsoever. And as for that glitched contract, what I did is I set an alarm for the 28 days that I was supposed to wait in orbit to complete the contract. And then once those 28 days are up, um, I'm just going to use the debug menu to give myself that contract. Now, because my science tree is maxed out until uh, I managed to upgrade the research and development center, uh, I ran into, I've, I've been putting my energy into there, but I ran into a bit of a problem. And uh, so I'm going to upgrade the administrative building so I can start picking up more contracts. Because the problem is, is that, you know, I got seven contracts active um, and all of them are in the process of being done. <laughs> They're all ships out there, all doing stuff, trying to get these contracts done. So right now I have absolutely nothing going on in my building queue. I don't have any ships being built. And that's, I don't, I don't, that's a waste of time. I, I don't want to do that. So um, I upgraded so I can pick up some more contracts and get some more ships going to try and meet those particular contracts. And the other thing that I want to do is um, I want to take a look at my strategies here and the one that I'm interested in is actually the patent licensing because I have 668 science and nothing to do with it. So what I'm going to do is use patent licensing, set it up to 20% and what that's going to do is take 20% of the science that I earn from now on and convert that as well into funds and hopefully all this stuff will help me pick up the little bit quicker the 4 million plus that I need to upgrade that research and development center. 
And that brings us to the moon. And already in orbit around the moon is the Kanata base. Uh, I'm not going to show you the launch and transfer. I've done so many missions to the moons, you don't need to see that. So all I'm going to show you here is the landing. But what I want to do is pick a particular landing part map or spot. And this map here is a carbonite map uh, using the MapSat mod. This is a com the carbonite map of the moon. And I want to land in the south end of the northwest crater, which is a little bit to the right of center on your screen, near where that anomaly is, somewhere in there. It's, it's indicating to me that the carbonite concentration is relatively high in that location. Uh, and I've done a couple of landings on the moon, so I don't think I need to spend a lot of time with it. Now I did get a little bit lazy with the design. This 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 vessel's pretty much a carbon copy of the um, the Canada station that is orbiting the moon right now. The only thing that's different is the antenna array that's at the top. I made it a little bit shorter. I didn't put the big antennas on it, and uh, I replaced the Gigantor solar arrays which were on the. Canada orbiting station and replace them with just some smaller solar panels. Um, I also still have those, uh, well they're actually the small deployable um, radiators believe it or not, but uh, and you might be wondering well, why do you have those those pretty big radiators on there with just those small solar panels? Well that's because eventually this thing's going to have to have a nuclear power source because on the moon with its three day plus night uh, good luck having batteries last that amount of time. This thing needs to have some form of power other than solar and batteries. So um, that is why I put these big radiators on there because I'm going to eventually have to put a nuclear reactor down there nearby and get some Kerbals to hook the two together using Kerbal attachment system. And the nuclear reactors generate quite a bit of heat and the heat you can't move it around you can't control it in the same way as you can other resources you'll see once I start attaching things together where heat becomes an issue um, and so I wanted to make sure this thing doesn't end up overheating so I wanted to put some radiators on this thing so that I have no worries whatsoever with it overheating the other thing you know and I'm sort of actually a little bit disappointed with the design because um, I, I, I put again that one person landy can on the top um, to give it, to make it meet the five Kerbal requirement and then didn't even notice that I still um, have to have a mobile processing lab attached to this thing. So that's going to have to come at a later date. So that was an oversight on my part. And even still, you know, I'd unlocked actually the Coppola by this point, that, that, that one man big windowed <laughs> thing and I was like going oh man you know that would have been sweet to have that on the top instead of this this landing can it would have looked a little bit better but oh well this is what I got now now this thing has a ton of fuel it's still working on just the transfer stage and I can I could probably land it just with the transfer stage but obviously that's not going to work so what I'm doing is I'm using up as much of my energy as I can just from the fuel on the transfer stage uh, so that I don't have to waste it but then the time comes where I really don't have any choice. I have to ditch it. Uh, but even with that, I still got 600 meters per second of delta V left in the land here, in the base here. Uh, that guy will hit the ground and, and blow up, and I'm going to just sort of move the lander off to one side just a little bit, uh, just so they don't land in the same place wherever where this thing's going to crash. And the reason why... Um, I put so much delta V on it is because I, you know, I, I wanted to have the option that if I got down and didn't like my landing spot, that I can, you know, if it was a little bit too much of a slope to it, that I could move it over to a different location. Oh, there goes, there goes the. Oh, there's still a piece there. It just took a bounce. Well, that's nice. So it blew up a little bit. But there's still a chunk going down. Anyway, we're going down nice and slow. I'm, I'm going to take my time with this because there's no reason to really worry too much about fuel. Wow, that's really going for a tumble. Where did I go? Oh, there goes another explosion. All right. Anyway, what do we got? 50 meters getting close. I can see the lights slowing myself down does look pretty flat. Oh, there's my shadow. 20 meters. Ten meters. And 
touchdown. And yeah, let's take a look around here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So this is going to end up just sort of staying here, not doing anything for now. Um, I have a plan. I have to bring a materials lab, the materials processing lab down here and put it in beside it. But it's, And then I'm going to have to put down a power source other than those solar panels that are at the top. That's going to have to come down here. And then I'm going to have to bring in some kerbals and hook the whole thing together. And eventually I do want this to become a kerbinite uh, a carbonite, I'm sorry, uh, mining facility. Oh, look, I still got some debris. Well, that's awesome. I love debris when it's on the surface of a planet. I don't know what that's about. When you're on a planetoid, why is it cool to have debris, but debris floating around in orbit is, is considered junk? But debris scattered on a surface, that's great. It's like, it's like this, I don't know, it's like we just indicated that we were here and uh, we're proud of the mess that we left behind. But that will end this episode. We'll see you next time.